the world. You know? That's fun. So. Well, good morning, everyone. On behalf of the IT Greening Committee, I'd like to welcome you all here today. Uh, my name is Ken D'Amato. I'm one of the co-chairs. Uh, we have what I think will be a really exciting day today. Um, we've got a lot of great presenters. Uh, we've got a, a veritable dream team of finding funding for IT Greening projects for IT. So before we get started, I'd just like to uh, run through the agenda real quick. Um, I will let everyone know that uh, today's session is being broadcast out on the web and uh, also being recorded. So if you think uh, this content is going to be valuable to other folks that weren't able to be here today, please uh, direct them to the forum website. Um, there will be a link to get to this content. Um, and uh, if you want to hear yourself uh, in this pre-recording, please ask questions. Um, we are going to do a extended Q&A period at the end. Um, so if um, we would ask that you try to hold your questions sort of to the end. If something comes up, you really need something clarified, you, you feel free to raise your hand and we'll try to get an answer. But we are going to try to push, hold most of the questions to the end of the day. So just to, to run through the brief agenda, um, we're going to start off with Chris Funk from NYSERDA, who's going to give us kind of an overview of what NYSERDA's program missions are and some of the opportunities they have for uh, supporting the data center IT greening projects. Um, then we're going to hear from Stacy Hickok and G, or excuse me, Gene Hickok and Stacy Hughes from NYSERDA. We're going to talk about the programs that um, National Grid has relative to um, energy efficiency programs, and also talking about some selected case studies. After that, we're going to hear from Indu from SUNY Albany, who's really going to bring us through the whole life cycle of an IT grooming project that is that received funding. Um, outside of her organization, really from identifying a green project, identifying the funding resources, and then giving some helpful tips on how to write a grant that actually gets funded. Uh, then we're going to hear from Tom Ferlani from SUNY Buffalo, who's going to talk about the center, Buffalo's uh, Center for Computational Research and their data center energy efficiency program. And then we're going to finish up with Tom Hudgens from Wildan, who's going to be doing a presentation on developing financial strategies that leverage utilities um, incentive programs for energy efficiency. So with that, I'll just read a quick uh, brief bio here for Chris Stump, and then we'll be on our way. So Chris is a project manager at NYSERDA, working in the Process Power and FlexTech group. He currently works as an account manager under the Industrial and Process Efficiency Program, and these program efforts in data center efficiency. Chris joined NYSERDA in February of 2009. He brings 15 years of energy, excuse me, engineering and operations management experience to NYSERDA and has worked in process systems and industrial engineer for Floor Daniel, as well as in supply chain management with blood power. Chris has a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering from RPI and a Master's of Business Administration from the University of Albany. And with that, I present to you Chris Stump. Thanks, Ken. Good morning, everybody. Um, so I am Chris Stump and uh, project manager right here in Albany. Um, I'm also the, the upstate uh, lead for our data center and IT efficiency uh, <coughs> program. So um, at the end here, you'll see some contact information. If you've got uh, potential projects um, in upstate New York, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. So I'm going to go through here's my quick agenda, uh, give you a little overview on NYSERDA, some of the things that we do. Um, our focus on data centers, uh, as well as some of the specific programs um, and incentives that are available to you, um, and then you know, how to get started. Okay, so let's jump right into it. So, um, NYSERDA sort of is the New York State <coughs> Energy Research and Development Authority. Okay, we are a public benefit corporation, uh, started in the 70s. Um, I think mean, the initial mission at that time was, was about oil uh, dependency. Uh, so we remember what was going on back in the 70s there um, is what uh, really started us, but we certainly have evolved over time. Um, and we're typically involved and tasked with going after the biggest uh, energy challenges that, uh, that New York faces. Um, and uh, the majority of the funding that we receive is through something called the Systems Benefits Charge. And I'll talk a little bit more in detail about that as we talk about participation. Um, to give you more formally our, our updated <coughs> missions and, and vision statements here. Um, so we're, we're trying to advance the, the innovative energy solutions that help New York, and we, we kind of talk about the two E's, the, the economy and the environment. Um, so the, the idea of being able to help people move forward and, and make choices uh, that will help New York State grow <coughs> from an economic perspective, but making energy efficient choices 
And um, the programs that you'll find are geared towards trying to provide some objective and credible information to help people make those decisions, and also financial incentives to, uh, to help make them reality when it's time to actually deploy or implement those uh, solutions. Um, given a, a, this slide here kind of talks about the, um, the overall approach of the types of programs that NYSERDA offers, and we take a look at what we call our, the innovation chain. So, as a technology is something that's, that's first in its fledgling stages and trying to get started all the way through you know, commercially available technologies, we've got programs that are trying to help foster that through that entire evolution. Um, so you see in the, the red colors on this little slide here mentioned our, our R&D, research and development efforts, and we're looking at emerging technologies, leading edge type, leading edge type technologies trying to do feasibility and, and um, demonstration or pilot programs to really prove that out. Um, and typically, when, once it seems like, hey, this could work, we can hand that off to our, uh, uh, what we call market transformation, or really trying to develop the supply chain and, and getting that technology onto the shelf, if you will, um, and making it available. So by the time you get down to that, the, the green section there of deployment, it's a, it's a commercially viable option for people and we've got programs that are out there to help people make those choices um, and, and get that technology to be widespread. So the majority of what I'm gonna talk about today is in that last stage of that the deployment of commercial applications, okay? So that's the, the programs that I represent, and um, in most cases what I see people who are working with are, are willing to invest in. <laughs> They've got a business they need to run, they gotta get things moving, um, so we're gonna focus on those, those commercially available um, options opportunities. Um, so a lot of questions we get is why is NYSERD involved in data centers? Um, and when I talk about a program um, later, which is our industrial and process efficiency program, of which data center efficiency is part of, we kind of ask, well, why are those things lumped together? And, and here's some data as to why. Um, so New York State has the second largest <laughs> concentration of data centers in the United States, uh, California being number one. Okay, um, so it's a tremendous load on the infrastructure in the state, and um, it's only going to grow. So you can see some of the, the um, stats there, but uh, you know, billions of kilowatt hours a year and hundreds of millions of dollars being spent on energy just to run IT and, and the associated uh, equipment like cooling to support those facilities and, and those operations. So it's a, it's a big focus. Um, and um, you know, as, as we see things going to expand when you're talking about you know, electronic records in the medical industry, um, you know, the, the growth of social networking and all these other different opportunities, communications, um, it, it's only gonna grow and the challenges are gonna be uh, bigger and uh, you know, we wanna be there to help companies compete, stay in New York State and uh, be able to, to handle uh, that growing demand. So, uh, so that's why we're, we're focusing in this area, and that's why data centers and, and IT efficiency is important to us. Okay. Um, well, what can NYSERDA kind of offer? So we recognize that's your focus on your businesses and your operations. So we've got kind of you know, three areas that uh, we can offer. So the technical assistance aspect, and I'll talk about a program called FlexTech, um, is meant to offer that uh, you know, objective, credible um, engineering information to help you make decisions. Um, and uh, then that can roll into what you can kind of understand what you want to do. Um, and you've got projects that you need funding for. We've got financial incentives to actually you know, go ahead and deploy things. Um, you know, and, and those are geared towards you know, offsetting your capital costs of getting those projects installed. And we also offer things where we're working on a project right now that's um, called our, our data center energy efficiency framework. Um, and that is a, basically an assemblage of um, best practices around the industry. So we have a contractor who's worked on developing this framework, talking with end users of IT equipment um, and data center owners and operators, the, the whole supply chain vendors of those equipment to help develop these best practices or choices you can make in your operations. And um, that framework is part of, you know, again, an objective, credible piece of information. Um, it's also free, so it's um, not quite up on our website yet, but I've got the, uh, the work order with our group now, but it will be on our website, which I'll show you the URL later, 
Um, but that white paper is going to be available and it's free information for people to understand, um, you know, what are opportunities. So that's just kind of an overview of the things that we're doing to try to, you know, um, you know raise the awareness and help people make those energy efficient choices um, in this sector. So now I'm going to get into some more of the actual details of the programs um, and uh, how you, you know, what programs are available and, and how you can participate. So uh, as I mentioned, the two program categories I'm really going to focus on now are the technical assistance and then actual implementation or deployment uh, incentives. Um, so two fundamental criteria for uh, participation. You've got to be in New York State, okay, so we're funded with, with funds through New York State. And uh, you have to contribute to uh, the system benefits charge, so or SBC for short. So the system benefits charges is basically a surcharge on the delivery portion of your utility bill. Okay, um, not everybody in New York State pays it. Um, therefore, only the people who do pay into it are eligible to reap the benefits of it. Okay. Um, it is assessed on the bills, and you'll you're hear from National Grid, who's you know one of our independently owned uh, you know utilities. Um, it's those independently owned utilities that, uh, that charge that SBC. So, um, for instance, Long Island Power Authority and, and uh, you know, LIPA is a public authority. They do not charge the SBC um, in that area. Therefore, they are not eligible to participate in our programs. Um, and the last bullet there is a, there, there may even be situations if you've got multiple feeds to a facility or there are other economic development type programs where people might be paying SBC on only a portion of their bill. Um, you're still eligible, um, but your, your incentives that I'm going to talk about may be prorated based on that, that partial situation. But uh, just think about if you've got an operation in New York State and on your energy bill you're paying SBC, um, which takes me to the next slide to give you an idea. Um, ooh, we do have a pointer here. This is just a, um, an example of, of an energy bill, and you'll see that in your um, delivery portion of the bill, you would see this line item. It's often broken to say SBC slash RPS. Um, those stand for the System Benefits Charge and the Renewable Portfolio Standard. So if you're looking at, and you can look at this at home, by the way, too. So if you've got your home bills and you take a look at it, and you're paying into it, you know, take a look at the possible residential incentives as well. But um, you know, check for that, and if you've got that on your energy bill, you're eligible for the programs. Okay. Um, so let me kick into the, the technical assistance portion. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, our uh, program is called FlexTech, um, basically a, an acronym for Flexible Technical Assistance. And um, the goal here is to provide a cost-shared engineering study to help you make good en energy choices. Um, again, that's the, I keep repeating that the objective credible part of it as well. So it's an objective credible um, study to, to help you with your choices. And the types of things you can look at in the data center and IT world, you know, feasibility studies of what, ener you know, where energy is, is uh, being used and what might be opportunities for you to reduce that. Uh, we can look at both, you know, uh, facilities type of projects as well as uh, servers and IT infrastructure. Um, the reality is it can be very customized to your needs. It can be as big or small as you want. And um, you know, including things like we showed here, some CFD modeling. Um, and the cost share piece of it comes in that nice sort of will pay up to 50% of the cost of, of hiring somebody to do that study. So here's some of the, the details about that. So um, you can work with uh, one of uh, a nice sort of flex tech consultant or you can work with anybody, I mean, basically a consultant of your choice. Uh, we do go out through a competitive solicitation and vet uh, uh, you know, engineering <laughs> firms who feel are qualified to do this work. And so you could choose from that list that's on our website and we can make available to you. If you choose to use somebody of your own, um, you know, choosing who happens to not be a flex tech provider, that's fine, we'll still cost share 50%. Um, and the, the expectations of what the deliverables are from that report um, will, will still be the same no matter who you use. Um, the idea is that it'll provide technical and, and financial justification for projects. You basically end up with a report that says, hey, here are the, the problems we looked at for you, here are some reasonable solutions, and here are the estimates of the cost as well as the benefits that you'll see with a simple payback at the end. So it's a really nice tool for people when they're looking to prioritize projects, um, especially when you've got some precious CapEx dollars available to you and they're limited these days. Um, it helps prioritize what projects you might be able to go after. Um, 
you see some of the caps there. We could go up to $1 million of our funding for a study. So you recognize that that's a $3 million study. So those for very large types of studies or maybe over long periods of time. Um, and uh, we could even include metering at this point. So uh, if someone who's interested say, I want to do a study, but I really don't have much granularity currently at my uh, facility to know where energy is being used, well, you can get some metering installed to help understand your challenges, and we can roll the cost of that metering into the program. However, the cost of that metering can exceed more than 50% of the, uh, the overall project cost. So again, that goal is to provide you know, objective, credible information so that you can make good decisions. Um, and it, it really rolls nicely into the deployment um, portion of our, our programs. So the one that I'm going to talk most specifically about that's geared towards um, IT and the data center efficiency is our industrial process efficiency program. Um, this is what we call an open enrollment, custom measure, performance-based program. What that means to us is open enrollment means first come, first serve. So if you're eligible, we talked about SBC before, <coughs> first come, first serve, fill out an application and come into the program. Um, second is it's custom measure, which means it's not specifically geared towards lighting or motors or any specific technology. It's if it, the opportunity will save energy, and we're interested in kilowatt hours, or if you're a natural gas user, MMBTs, we do have funding for that as well. Um, you know, we're interested in that project. Uh, the performance-based aspect is um, the more energy you save, the more money you get. Okay, so we've got incentives that are on a per unit of energy saved basis. Um, and I'll give you some of those rates here in a moment. Um, and uh, it's geared towards providing incentives for verifiable energy savings. Okay? Um, that, this program, as I mentioned, is, is focused in manufacturing as well as data centers. So that's why we're here today and folks in, in the room are interested in IT um, greening. And um, we could go after projects that whether it's support systems, you know, like your cooling or UPS systems in there, um, or your IT structure, infrastructure. Um, you'll hear later about some of the work that SUNY Buffalo did in, in virtualization of, of pieces of equipment, and uh, those types of programs are available. Um, we can offer it through existing facilities or new construction. So essentially those are two types of projects we typically see, that you're upgrading some existing installation, or you're looking to expand and build new. Uh, this program is available to you uh, with the same incentives no matter what that situation is, either of those categories. Um, give you a little bit of background on the funding that's available and on um, the goals and, and how we're doing in the program. So combined for natural gas and electric efficiency, we had uh, about $115 million, and that was funding that started back in 2009, and it's available to us through 2011. Um, with those reduction goals, you can see it's a lot of megawatt hours, a lot of uh, electricity, and a lot of uh, natural gas savings that we're trying to deliver for that money. Um, we are, as you can see, we're about uh, 30 to 40 percent along um, in our goals right now. What we're reporting there on our status is that um, that's money that we've committed to people already. So we've got more projects in the pipeline that we haven't actually written contracts yet um, to, to commit that, those dollars. Um, but the message that I want to take away from this slide is that we still got money available. And uh, we're going to know we're in 2011 now. And it says the funding is good through 2011. What that means to us is we've got a contract with you in 2011. So get your application in. We'll work with you, understand what the proposed project is for energy savings, and we'll commit some dollars to you. And basically, hold that aside. It doesn't mean you have to finish your project in 2011. Okay. And once we contract with you, you have up until about two. I think it's, yeah, it's two years from the point we contract you to actually finish and install the project. So. The message from here is that you got money available. If you're doing planning now, if you're looking out the next 18, 24 months, and you're trying to, to prioritize which projects are available, come and talk to us. We can, we can work with you to, to, to set aside some funding for your projects. Okay. Um, here's the details on the, the um, uh, incentive rate structure. So as I mentioned, it is performance-based. And we do have two, uh, two structures, one for Downstate, which is essentially the Con Edison territory, and then the rest of the state. Um, so upstate, um, it's 12 cents per kilowatt hour for electricity efficiency, or $15 per MMBTU of natural gas for those efficiency projects. And uh, we also added, uh, call our operations and maintenance 
um, type of projects at those the rates just for electric for five cents per kilowatt hour. And that's really tied to what we call monitoring based commissioning. So if you're doing changes, say, in the data center world, um, you've got some monitoring systems in place for your temperature set points, and you're looking at um, you know, maybe raising the, the inlet temperature or the, the cold aisle temperature in your, your data center. You want to understand what the savings might be by doing that. Um, we want to encourage you to make those behaviors, and um, there will be uh, opportunities to do that if you can show that you made those changes and you're monitoring for a length of time and, and keeping that, those set points there and saving that energy. We could give you five cents uh, per kilowatt hour. We do do an engineering analysis for every project. But that basically means, we, as I mentioned, we're paying for verifiable energy savings. So we've got to do an estimate and quantify what your energy savings would be up front. And then uh, we'll take a look at kind of your existing case and then your after case um, to, to really see what energy was saved. Um, and that's what we mean by MV there at the bottom. Um, we do a detailed MV only for the larger projects. So if your project is going to save more than 500,000 um, kilowatt hours or, or 10,000 in MVTU, we will do some detailed measurement um, to validate that. Um, if it's only lighting, we'll actually raise that threshold for a million um, kWh uh, for lighting projects. Uh, but the good news is, is that the efforts to do that, um, NYSERDA does hire contractors to help with this, to do that engineering analysis and that MV, and that's at no cost to you as the applicant. So if you know it's going to save energy, you just don't know how much, um, if you can help us provide the data, our technical reviewers can help actually do the quantification of that. Okay? Um, and then you see some of the maximums and, and minimums for the actual dollars. So we would like your projects to, to qualify for at least a $10,000 incentive. And uh, we can go up to $5 million or 50% of your project cost. Okay? Uh, just a reiteration of some of the project opportunities. So as you're looking throughout your facility, um, you may have your, your facility folks who are interested in your cooling or um, airflow management, um, you know, UPS systems, power distribution, things like that. Um, there are opportunities to reduce the energy uh, usage in those systems, um, as well as the IT. And you know, find, obviously, that they're, they're interconnected. So times when you're making uh, choices and changes to your <coughs> IT infrastructure, there would be impacts, potentially, um, on your support systems. And we recognize that those can be uh, you know, interactive and, and work together. So we've got uh, this program is designed to be able to accommodate both of those things. Okay. So let's get into the how to get started piece of it. Um, so here's some of the, the websites. Um, and I'll leave that up for a minute if people want to um, you know, jot those down. Um, Nicerta.org is our, our home page. Um, and admittedly, I'll tell you, it's a huge website with a lot of information, and it can be overwhelming. <laughs> so if you specifically want to get to the FlexTech to learn more about the, the technical assistance program, please take a look at that URL that will get you right to the FlexTech page. Um, and same thing for the Industrial Process Efficiency Program. So um, nicerta.org backslash IPE will get you there um, to find out some more information. See some people jotting that down, so I'll leave it up there for a second. Um, but on that website, you'll be able to find applications, more information about it. We're also loading case studies on there now. Um, that the, um, the data center energy efficiency framework will be on the data center portion of that page um, in the coming weeks. So uh, definitely check back at it. The, the program's evolved, and um, there's a lot of information there. Um, so specifically on the applications, um, they're simple. So one of the things I want to get you guys to think about is typically people think about applying for government grants and they think of them as grants. Um, as I mentioned, this is a, well, all the programs that I've mentioned today are first come, first serve, okay? They are not competitive solicitations. So this is not a 30 or 40 page grant paper that you've got to fill out and compete against other people coming for this, these dollars. These are one and two page applications that you provide some information about your facility you provide some information about your project, so you can you know, attach a, a write-up if you've written a justification internally for your own project that describes what you're trying to do. You attach some of your utility bills, give us the most recent month of your utility bill that proves you're paying SBC, and you just apply to the program and you can get off and running. Um, the three applications I threw up there, just as a reminder, is the, the existing facilities program, so think if you're making an upgrade to 
um, a, you know, an existing operation. Um, that would be the, 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 the uh, application to fill out the new construction program. Uh, if you're building something new or doing a, a, an expansion, a major renovation um, to a space, um, think new construction. Um, in both cases, um, in those applications, you'll see a box on that for industrial and process efficiency. Just check that box and that'll get you into the, uh, the, this program. So it's not a separate application for industrial and process efficiency. It comes through existing facilities or new construction. <coughs> and then the last application that's sitting there is FlexTech um, for the, the technical assistance or study aspect. Okay. And um, I think this is my, uh, of course, my last slide here. Um, wanted to leave some contact information. So I mentioned um, in, the, in the data center world, um, myself and uh, my uh, colleague, Sandy Huang. Um, um, Sandy is, is based in our New York City office. Uh, and I'm based up here in Albany. So she takes the lead on our downstate projects and uh, I take the lead on all the upstate projects. So there's our phone numbers and our uh, emails. Please feel free to contact us if you have more questions or, or potential projects. Um, you'll also hear from later is Thomas Hudgens is here. Um, Wildan Energy Solutions is a contractor of NYSERDA and they've been hired to help people tar participate in our programs. Um, so you can uh, reach out to Thomas and, and his team. Um, they can help you through the application process as well as myself or Sandy to, to get things rolling um, to try to make your the participation um, as easy as possible. So, um, that's uh, my last slide. I think I did all right on time. I didn't get the, the hook yet, so I think I got five minutes here if there are any quick questions. Um, if anybody's got that, uh, please. Yes. It, so it's it's calendar. Can you hear me here? Sorry. Can you hear me now? Um, the uh, so to clarify that the funding availability for 2011 is uh, calendar year 2011. Okay, and again, it's for us to contract with you. So once you, and the process is once you put in an application and we work, we understand what your project is and what the estimated energy savings is we would actually, literally, we're gonna write a purchase order to say I'm buying kilowatt hours from you, right? Once that purchase order is done, that's our contract. So we just need to have that in place by the end of 2011, and you have up to two years to actually execute the project after that. Yes, sir? We already have initiatives going on. We're replacing desktops with fit clients, and we're also consolidating data centers. Great. Would they be eligible as projects that are, that are just in the, in the process of Sure, so it's a good question, and, and actually I, I should have been something I meant to, to talk about was the performance-based programs are not retroactive, okay? So there are things that it's not a, we do have other rebate programs and lighting and motors and things like that that you can go and do those things and come back and, and, and get money for it. Um, but that being said, if you're, you're talking in terms of you're still in that initiative, um, basically the terms of the program is we'd like to get an application prior to purchase or installation of equipment. However, we do leave a 90-day window on the purchasing side, so we recognize there may be long lead times for pieces of equipment. So if you can prove that you got an application into us within 90 days of placing the purchase order, but you haven't actually installed the equipment, we can still work with you on that. And even if, let's say you're in stages, I've worked with some other customers who are doing fat to thin client, some of them might be sitting in this room, um, fat to thin client conversions over periods of time. Um, we, maybe we missed phase one, but we're working with them on phase two, three, four going forward. Um, so if you got something you know, going on in future initiatives, please uh, you know, let us know. Okay. Chris, you might also want to add the data center consolidation. Oh. That that's an inherently an energy efficiency project. Absolutely, data center, thank you, Tom. So I focused on the first part of your question, but the, you know, we're seeing a lot of data center consolidation right now, um, just from a, you know, for a number of reasons. One, the, the expense of, of having the, the footprints, um, the technology advancements that allow you to do more computing in a smaller port, you know, uh, physical footprint. And um, as Thomas alluded to that, is, is when you start to look at how much computing capacity you can do 
for the footprint and the energy that's being consumed, you, there's in, some inherent efficiencies that are there. And so if you've got some projects where you're, you're considering doing that, um, please, you know, again, let us know. And we'd be happy to, to be involved in that. Yes? Chris, does NYSERDA have any performance requirements in terms of who you target as recipients of these grants? For example, do you have to have, like, 20% going to public entities, 25% private entities? No, on this, NYSERDA in general has programs across all their portfolios that they try to develop for specific areas. We may have small business programs or non-for-profit programs or agricultural programs, things like that. In this particular program, there is no requirement by sector or geographically. It's first come, first serve. Um, so if you qualify for the program, come on in. Great. And I'll be available for questions again afterwards. So thank you very much uh, for your time. And if you've got projects, give us a shout.